there's lots of talk on forums at the moment that the BMW R90 OEM rear shock is no good and it needs to be replaced. Are these comments true? Do you need to upgrade? Or is it possible that your OEM shock can be tuned to you and how you ride on your local roads? And if not, which shock is actually best for you? Reading all the forums is confusing and you may actually wonder, are we changing just because that's what everybody else says you should do? The rear shock's rubbish, so you should upgrade to something that costs you 500 US or a thousand even. But is that just us in the R9T community with a herd mentality? And if so, is the herd actually right? The only way to find out is to grab that OEM shock and set it up for you and how you ride your bike. The R9T comes in three different specifications with three different travel settings depending on the model of R9T you've got. The OEM shock isn't fully adjustable but it does allow you to adjust travel with the preload and it also has rebound adjustment. So to understand whether the OEM shock can actually work for how you ride, you need to set it to the base settings. And once you've got those base settings, you can slowly tweak it and refine it so it works perfectly for you. A few seconds ago I mentioned that you could adjust preload and that would affect travel on your shock. But what is travel? Well travel is the distance that the shock travels through on the actual shaft of the shock through the full stroke of the shock itself. And the stroke is measured from the top of the spring in its fully extended position all the way through down the shaft to the bottom out position. The original 2013 R9T, now known as the Roadster, came factory fitted with a shock that had 120 millimeters of travel. This measurement is what you can measure when you've got the preload adjuster fully wound out anti-clockwise. The measurement includes what's known as installed preload. But let's keep it simple for now, the Roadster comes with 120 millimeters of travel, as does the Pure and the Racer, unless you've had the factory option of lowered suspension. Whereas the Scrambler and the Urban GS come with 20 millimeters more stroke with 140 millimeters of total travel. Regardless, you can adjust preload using the adjustment knob or a C-spanner, and you can adjust rebound damping using the adjustment screw. Although today we're primarily trying to see whether the OEM shock works for you, it has to be said the OEM shock is limited compared to high-end fully adjustable shocks. High-end shocks include such things as high and low compression damping adjustability, which really makes suspension much more tunable. But unfortunately the OEM shock doesn't provide this particular feature. After saying that, before you go out and spend hundreds or even a thousand dollars on a new rear shock, it's worthwhile evaluating how you're riding and on what types of roads you ride on. Gaining basic understanding of how to set up your shock to see if it actually works for you. Maybe you find out once you've set up your OEM shock correctly for how you ride that you've actually got sufficient improvements and you can actually save that money to spend on something else. For example, some lovely new clip-ons. At a minimum, learning how to set your own OEM shock will actually give you the knowledge to know what is missing performance of anything, which can then convey to a suspension tuning expert in the case that you do actually end up deciding that you do want to upgrade. Naturally, the OEM shock comes out of the factory set to a base setting, but over time, this can, for various reasons, come out of the preset range, and it's handy to know how to set it back to that factory baseline. So that leads us to the question on how do you actually set the baseline for your OEM shock? Traditionally, when you're setting up shocks, you start off by setting sag, like free sag and static sag. And I go into those types of things in more detail in another video. But in this video, what we're gonna do, just to keep things simple, is set the shock back to the factory baseline settings. And then we can tweak it from there. Getting your shock back to the baseline factory settings will then put you in a position which will enable you to dial in your shock specifically for the roads you ride on, your particular body weight, and how you like to ride. Now speaking of body weight, what I can say up front is that if you're either 85 kg, then the OEM spring's gonna be too soft. And what you'll need to do is at least upgrade the spring. But if your budget permits, I'd advise upgrade to a fully adjustable shock, preferably one that's supplied by a local supplier and suspension tuner. The point I'm trying to make here is you don't just wanna buy the cheapest thing you can get off the net, 
even if it's from a reputable brand like uh, YSS or Bilston or Wilbur or Olin's or any of these brands, the big name brands, you want to buy something that's supported locally in your local area and stand there and have a good chat with a suspension expert. The things I've learned is from speaking to these people face to face. Now assuming you're less than 85kg or even if you're 85kg or heavier and you still want to set up your OEM shop to see how it goes, then let's get on with it. Firstly I'll cover the R90 Roadster because it's a little bit different to the Pure, the Racer and the Scrambler and the Urban GS. The following settings are for the rider who has no luggage and isn't carrying a pillion. Step 1 is to grab the preload knob and turn it anti-clockwise all the way as far as you can until it's locked out. Step 2 is to adjust the rebound damping. So you need to locate the rebound damping screw at the bottom of your rear shock and you need to turn that screw all the way around clockwise to the locked out position but then turn it one and a half turns anti-clockwise. If you tend to ride your bike with a pillion more often than not then what you want to do instead is actually turn that clockwise all the way around 100% until it's locked out and then turn it back one full turn anti-clockwise. Now that's only for a model that's a 214 to a 216. If your R90 is newer than a 216 then you want to make that a three quarter turn anti-clockwise. Now with regards to step two when you're carrying a pillion you set it exactly the same as if you're not carrying a pillion but then what you need to do is go for a few rides with the pillion on board and see how it feels for both of you and then just adjust that rebound damping a little bit each way to see what suits you best. With regard to luggage and after you've made the settings we've already discussed what you need to do is grab the preload adjuster and turn it half a turn clockwise. And this will give you a baseline setting for a one up and or two up carrying luggage. But of course you'll need to go and ride with one up or two up and luggage to see how you need to make other minor adjustments to your preload and or your rebound damping. But at least you'll have a baseline setting for carrying luggage. So far I've just covered the R9T Roadster but all Heritage R9T motorcycles have the same adjustments except they use a C-spanner to make the adjustment because they use a castellated nut as in castle and the castellated nut is named after that because it looks a lot like the masonry work and old battlements on castles that you see throughout Europe. But enough of the history lesson there, the point is you turn the castellated nut to release the adjustment nut and the adjustment nut allows you to adjust the preload just like it does on the R90 Roadster. After loosening the lock nut with the C-spanner you can turn the adjuster nut clockwise to increase the preload and further compress the spring. On the other hand, by turning it anti-clockwise, you're actually going to uncompress the spring, reducing preload. Start with a measurement of 24 millimeters and measure that with a flexible tape measure up to the start of the thread. Unless of course you've got the factory load suspension, in which case you want to start with 18 millimeters. With the Urban GS you can start with the same 24 millimeters, or alternatively if you're riding off road you can actually turn the adjustment nut fully anti-clockwise to the lockout position so it's in a completely relaxed state. You can take it for a ride then and see how it feels and then you can come back and make further adjustments and put it somewhere in between the 24 millimeters and the fully relaxed state. For all bikes having the castellated lock nut it's really important after making adjustments that you re-lock it with the C-spanner before you get on your bike and take it for a ride. Next for the damping on the Pure and the Racer you want to turn the screw fully clockwise to the lockout position and then turn it three quarters of a turn anti-clockwise. Note this setting applies for the Scrambler as well if it has lowered suspension. For the Urban and the Scrambler, turn the rebound damping screw fully clockwise to the lockout position and then turn it one and a half turns anti-clockwise. If you're carrying a pillion then you want to set your preload slightly differently. You want to set it to 34 millimeters to the start of the thread. And the rebound damping screw should turn fully clockwise and then three quarts of a turn anti-clockwise. If you've got lowered suspension, make sure you use 28 millimeters to the top of the thread. And for the rebound damping screw, turn it one full turn to the lockout position and then turn it three quarts of a turn anti-clockwise. So now you have a baseline and effectively that baseline is the same settings as when it left the factory. And that may or may not be good for how you ride. But at least at this point you've got a baseline and you know what it is. And now you can write that down on a spreadsheet or just on a book. And then you can go and ride your favourite routes and then make any necessary adjustments based on how it feels. If you enjoyed this video then please click the like button down below. And if you feel like it subscribe. But if you're thinking about getting that third party shock then you won't want to miss out on this video right here.